What's good? It's Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. And this is not another damn, damn podcast. Presented by a damn self. 153. Uh, I'd have lost count by this point, but <laughs> been a lot still practicing the stay at home order under quarantine. So I self isolate, self, whatever you want to call it, social distancing. I don't even know what you want to call it. <laughs> Nine was in her crib. I'm in mine. That's where we at right now. Yes. And um, let's shout out the lovely jazz creator of J Sculpt. Of course, hey girl. First fitness belt that covers your entire mid session and provides 100 percent comfort during your workouts. Definitely had some summer like weather this weekend, and um, people showed their ass. Hey, all of the ass, not literally, just a little. Literally, all the ass. Yeah. Yeah, so this weekend, it was like 80 degrees in Chicago on Saturday, and it was beautiful weather. Um, I actually came up with the idea of, well, since we can't really do nothing for real, for real, how am I going to get the kids out? So I just called mom. I was like, mom, are you going to be home? She's like, yeah. So I was like, mom, can I just bring the kids to your house and then just let them run around your backyard and stuff? And it worked out perfect because mom just sat in the house and she watched the kids from inside the house while they ran around outside. They kept on going to the door like, grandma, grandma, you know, they were trying to go in the house. I'm like, no, you can't go in the house. You have to watch from the outside, you know, watch from the outside. She has to stay on the inside. And they would just look at the door and just waving at her and everything. And I mean, it was nice that mom got to see the kids, but you know, it's kind of hard sometimes because you know, she's like, she actually couldn't, like, physically touch them. Like, she couldn't, like, give them a hug or give them a kiss or do anything like that. But I'm like, at least you get to see them, your grandbabies. It'll be a long and, time before any of that goes on. Yeah, because it's been almost two months since mom has seen them. So, yeah. And then um, several of uh, the neighbors over there, they came out. Like, they were, like, doing things, like, tend to their yards and stuff. So Ariana was making friends with everybody. She's like, hi, I'm Ariana. And she was like talking to everybody that she saw that came out their house. Hmm. And I'm just like, <laughs> they're like, how old is she? I'm like, five. They're like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, she's she likes people. She's friendly. So, hmm. but it was nice though to be able to get out and do that. But see, you can still do things and see your family, but practice your social distancing. Like, still. I was out cruising yesterday. Yeah, it's like, well, you can cruise. Keeping away from people, yeah. Yeah, we've done that before we did the cruise. Like, (laughs) drive. Just don't be in large gatherings. Like, what's so hard to understand about not hanging out in large gatherings? That's not a hard thing to understand. Because that's how the virus is spread. It's like, Mm -hmm. not being outside ain't the problem. Being around motherfuckers is the problem. Right. And you start getting, like, 50, 100 people, and then... All y'all over there breathing all over each other. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Stop. Just stop. Like, I like to be able to go out to, out the house before the year's the, out. I want the lakefront to back open. Who knows right. when or if well, that's going to happen. Right. If we're going to have a, 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 a smidgen of summer, I like to have a smidgen of summer where, you know, I can walk the lakefront with I the kids. I want to ride my bike. I just want to walk with my kids. You know, mm-hmm. on the lake front. I just want to do that. Like we would just do a family day. Like Marcus and um and the kids and I, we just go and we just walk the lake front. <laughs> Marcus ain't doing a much walking, but <laughs> <laughs> when the kids will be doing the most of that walking. <laughs> <Like, yeah. laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I like to have that option to like be able to do something because our lake front is so beautiful. I have easy access to, to, like, because of where I live. So it's like, you know, but. I want to hit the path. I don't know if the path is going to open up anytime (laughs) soon. That's what I want to do. Yeah, it's like, this is really stupid. Like, people just not following directions. And then it's not just people like to try, like I said, we prevent, we, uh, we present all the facts of everything that's going on. I know a lot of people want to only present that there's only one group of people. No, they was like people on the South side, because people were at 87th and the Dan Ryan, and people were um, up north. So it's not just a south side or north. It's it's a, it's a Chicago thing. <laughs> keep it real. The biggest offenders were the west side. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Chicago did thing. Like, did you, you saw see the, um, the girl on the car? That was, that was some west side shit right there. 
<laughs> it's a Chicago thing. Like everybody is showing their ass. Like you said. It's, my, it's part two of me, like, roasting the West Side, dude. That's what I'm turning into. But everybody is doing it, though. So, I mean, it's not just where it's a yeah, particular... Shout out, shout, out, shout out Sierra Monet, too. <laughs> Maybe my favorite West Side. I got to show that. Just, <laughs> but people like to try to just make it be like, it's like just one demographic of people doing it. It's like, no, it's like everybody needs to sit their ass down. Like, uh, the weekend of that West Side party... Like they say, like uh, the report is saying now that it was probably 200 people in that party last week. But even still, 200 people, that's 200 people too many. In More than place. 10, whatever it was. <laughs> and, that ha- and that house was little. Like that house was like, even if it wasn't coronavirus, like. Even if it if wasn't they, a small house, it was too many if people. If an emergency <laughs> broke out, how would they have evacuated safely? How would people have evacuated safely? That's where my mind just goes. I always think about evacuations, escapes and all that. But it's like, how would you even be able to get out of there? So, so now um, our mayor, uh, Auntie Lori, Lori Lightfoot, she ain't playing no game. She's sick of the bullshit. So now it's um, a thing saying that people can be fined up to $5,000 for having these social gatherings. Like if you have, you know, if you have this going on or whatever. And she's saying that it's a tip line where you can uh, report it anonymously. Yep. So you don't even have to, you don't even have to get into that. Like if you see your neighbor, if you're in your house and you see your neighbor being ignorant, you can mm-hmm. just get that tip line and just look, check out on this block. Mm. They throw in this party. It's well more than 10 people in this party. The block is hot over here, man. You can easily do that. <laughs> and girls twerking on cars on the West side, man. <laughs> and the thing that I just keep on saying at the end of the day, the only color that everybody universally understands is gray. So when you start hitting people in their pockets, like I don't know about anybody else, but five thousand dollars, if you had to pay five thousand dollars fine right now, it would screw not, most I don't, I don't know about you, people. but I'm not trying to pay a fine of five thousand dollars. <laughs> not trying to pay that. You get that <laughs> not at all. It's like most people you can't afford five thousand dollars, especially right now, because like if anything, you need to be conserving your money because we don't know how long this is going to last. So don't waste any money right now. And then if you can avoid dumbass fines, avoid dumbass fines. Don't. Oh. And for my religious community, um, Governor J. B. Pritzker, he tweaked um the executive order to stay at home a little bit for the um religious mm-hmm. folks. Thanks to a lawsuit filed by the beloved church in Lena, Illinois. I don't even know where the hell Lena, Illinois is, but obviously it's some tiny town, like somewhere in the state. And they sued and said, we want to have church. So Governor JB, twi- he, um, he tweaked and said, yeah, churches are essential. Long as you keep um, 10 or less and social distance. So right. you can't have church service. Just don't, um, don't be ignorant and have, uh, don't go to the house of hope and have like it full. Shout out to um, Meeks. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not the hope, football man. stadium in there. Don't it is. The house of hope. <laughs> right. So you can still have your 10 people in there and be six feet apart. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Because he said, okay. Oh. Yeah. Which I can, I can see uh, why the, um, the church was upset. Because yeah. they, uh, it's good points. Like, so, uh, like, churches aren't essential, but liquor stores are. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, that was like what people say. Like, yeah. like, how is liquor stores essential? Yeah, but churches are not. Here where liquor's still <laughs> open, on Stoney. <laughs> well, all churches have been shut down since March or whatever. <laughs> right. And then, like, for people who are religious, it's like you need something to, like, release. Like, you need, um, you know, your faith to lean on right now during this time. Like, if you are a religious person. Yeah, so. like, if you're deeply religious and um, right. and you got your... um. Your local government, your leader saying that church is not essential, then you thinking it's Armageddon. Now. Are we right. all going to hell? Like, that's where your mind is going. So, like, you got to have that release. So, like, I'm glad he opened that back up. Yeah. People that just really want to go to worship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But don't be a dumbass, like we said. Like, just mm-hmm. don't go out and just don't be out there. And uh, speaking of dumbasses, I know you've seen all the dumbasses that have been. Um, well, Michigan in particular, I'm, I'm pointing you out right now, Michigan. Mm-hmm. You saw the dumbass goofies that stormed the Capitol building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> demanded. They come out, like, I saw an article, somebody was like, they come out looking dressed like they're the Call of Duty. Full, um, you know, fully armed rifles and shit. You're, Michigan like, dressed for combat. Wild, yeah. 
you're dressed for combat, like you're about to go to war. Again, all of those swing states are weird like that. That's why because you can't get your hair cut. What? The swing states are they weird? Because you can't get a massage. What? Because you can't get your nails done. What? This is what you're protesting for. I can't get my hair cut. And mm. my hair ain't been done. It's in a bun right now. Like, and well, I'm winning what? with the bald head now. Yeah, like bald if head. If you had them braids, I'd be like in bad shape now. <laughs> bald head y'all wear right now. <laughs> if I had braids, I'd have a fro right now. I wouldn't be rocking them yet. <laughs> I know Marcus is starting to grow a baby fro now. He's like, yeah, because <laughs> his, his little fro is starting to come in. And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> All right, he was like, Dad, you need to get a haircut. <laughs> like, well, nobody's getting them now except Uncle Oz, but yeah. <laughs> Oz, Oz ain't got no hair, so there you go. And Uncle Feast. <laughs> I'm talking about your, your handsome uncle. Oh, Lord. Not Feast. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna, Anyways. We're, we're going to make fun of Feast a little bit later in this podcast. Yes. Anyways. I got, some, I got something for him. Yeah. <laughs> These idiots were out here. And then the fact that, and this is where I really have to dig in on this. This is where when people say that it's no such thing as white privilege, this is where I call bullshit on because it's like, if, can you imagine if it was armed black men with rifles that stormed the Capitol building demanding the state to be reopened? What would you think would be the results if armed black men showed up doing that, screaming that I can't go to the barber and get my hair cut? I well, can't buy my Jordans. Black Panthers kind of did that back in the day, but they were thrilled. <laughs> though, so <laughs> they walked around with happened? rifles back in the day. So can you imagine what happened now? <laughs> they they that were was... thrilled, though. Yeah. <laughs> the way they were ones not to be fucked with the Black Panthers. <laughs> they were in the sixties, walking around with rifles. They they had open carry, like. Like fifty years ago, them cats yeah, they just didn't yeah. give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, but could you? But you saw what they did and how they shut, how they like came after them. Yeah, you mm-hmm. saw what the government did. Mm-hmm. But when these white men are out here with their guns, screaming about their privilege, screaming about not their privilege, screaming about their their um, this is my liberty. You're you're infringing on my freedom. What? What are you talking about? Well, I would just say, well, well welcome, well, welcome to what it's like being black. Man. Thank you. It's like that's what I'm saying. You, black people's approach to this and white people's is different. I'm gonna play the race card because it's our fucking podcast. Yes, it's, absolutely. Um, black people are not taking this seriously because it's like it's kind of a joke in like our community. It's like yeah, oh, nin- nin- ninjas can't get that. Ha ha ha. It's like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, until with white get affected by it until it hits yeah, home, and then yeah. it's like, oh man. The way these white people are responding is more like, yeah, this is America. You can't tell me what to do. Fuck yeah. You're French and on my right. It's like, yeah, it's more like that. I even saw some some dumbass people with their signs trying to equate this to being slavery. Mm. This is where I have to stop you. White people stop. (laughs) White people just stop right now. I'm not happy to get your hair having, cut having, and having, not having having, not, like, not getting a haircut that uh sounds like a choice to me. Right. <laughs> Borrow from Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't and then here's the thing about like like maybe I might be going to little racist right here or whatever, but that's why I'm black, I can't be racist. So <laughs> what I was gonna say is uh yeah, you can not like white people, but you can't be racist. That's the irony in this is that you guys are talking about haircuts, but I thought that we as white people were the superficial ones. I thought we were the one worried about getting our hair and nails done. And then you guys are out there storming. We ain't out there storming. Black people are complaining. Here. They just not storming Capitol buildings. But yeah, so we're not, we're not, saying, we're not storming Capitol so buildings. Yeah. We're just not storming Capitol. We're not storming Capitol buildings. We just go on Facebook and complain. That's what we do. We just Facebook. Well, we just like make funny videos about it. We're like, damn, haven't had a haircut in five weeks. Look at my shit. It's all fucked up. You know, we make fun of it. We're poking fun of it. We're doing that. We're not storming Capitol buildings with rifles demanding that it be open, that our state be reopened because we have to get our hair cut. Come on now. Like, don't be dumb. Don't be stupid. That's not, it's not the same thing. Like, as far as, like, freedoms and stuff. But, and then the thing that's getting, like, messy is that Trump has even said, like, well, well, they're nice people and they just want, you know, they're just starting to get a little, and, you know, he's trying to, you could tell that he's still trying to, like, appease and appeal to them, you know, even though, like, come on. 
be real. People come in with guns. That's not a, that's not a peaceful protest. Anytime someone comes with a gun, it's not a sign of peace. Why do I need a gun to get my point across? That's not peaceful. Like, yes, you can protest, you can rally, but when you bring a gun in, how is that peaceful? Come on now. Second Amendment. Come Fuck on. yeah, it's America. Let's have it across. Well, why are all these black men getting shot unarmed? <laughs> how about that? Like, let me, if you can explain that and get the correlation between, like, come on, uh uh-uh. uh. I can't buy, I can't go for that. But it's like he's just kind of like, oh yeah, well, they're just they're just showing concern and they're just this and that and you know like we shouldn't they're nice people but he said that about the Charlottesville he said they were nice people in Charlottesville mm-hmm. who had the riot and they actually killed people right these assholes aren't nice people mm-hmm. look up look at the word nice people I'm sure you don't see an asshole dressed like Call of Duty in it for a nice person that's all I'm saying mm-hmm. they're not they're not nice people. Mm-hmm. So, which well, is getting real ridiculous out here as far as um jobs. Like, I'm thankful that um nothing's happened um with the company I work with because I gotta um I gotta call out old iHeart Media, which you can Uh-oh. hear our podcast on, but still I'm gonna call your ass out. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> Calling these fuckers out, yeah. Is um they're um I guess it's like another furlough they're doing with um staff. They're sending um. Any um any um people who earn more than fifty thousand dollars a year are being required to take two weeks of unpaid vacation. Yes. <laughs> Why the hell would I go on vacation and I'm not gonna get paid? They don't want to pay you, say so like, we'll send you home for two weeks is what they're doing right now. For like that's, PE, any other people making fifty thousand or more. That's not that, like that, uh that that's like that company I used to work for that 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 mom and pop but at least it was a mom and pop organization I worked for like fifteen. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm pretty sure that company is, is out of business now. That one they are. Works at. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't making any money and then they were a mom and pop. So I get why they did. They didn't have the, the resources, they didn't have the funds. But I it. heard I guess they um I don't know how because like They've already they've been struggling a little bit recently. Anyway, I remember they stock at um they, had, they had pulled it off of the um it went it pulled it out of the public for a minute. The stock mm-hmm. was pulled off of the exchange and they put it back. I think earlier this year. Now they are doing this so like they in bad shape over there. And I heard I'm glad I don't work there because shit's getting ugly out here in these streets. Damn. So That's I'm like- actually worried about some of my people. I got a lot of friends that do work at that company, and I'm worried about a lot of them now. Yeah, that's messed up. It's like, but my whole thing is, if you're a corporation, like, I get, like, the smaller, like, the mom and pop, like, the smaller family businesses, I get that. But if you're a, a large conglomerate, like, are yeah, you, the bigger, The bigger the conglomerate, the more money they're losing. Whereas, like, but, small businesses are losing thousands. These companies are probably losing millions. But even still, if they're losing, yeah, it's like, I don't you know guys, what it is, yeah. You guys are operating exactly where you break even every month. Like you don't have any, any emergency. You you, know, you don't have like. I don't like, run a corporation, so I don't know how they do their numbers. Like maybe um, they do that. Maybe these are like preventative measures. Say before shit gets bad, that's why they do it. So I know this is. I've seen this with a couple of big companies that are doing shit like this. Because I'm like, I know you guys. Maybe are that's just how they operate. Is like. We we we're proactive and not reactive. I'm just trying to predict. Like maybe that's their mindset. Like, instead of waiting until shit gets bad, we try to stop the bleeding before it gets bad. I don't know. But I'm just like, I'm hoping y'all ain't robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, I get, like, why smaller outfits have to do that. Mm-hmm. But it's like... Smaller ones almost have to be reactive because they literally can't right. keep the lights on. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. well, these, these companies don't have that problem keeping the lights on, but they see, like, okay... We like keep it's losing, a miracle. We keep losing a million dollars a week. We probably will go bankrupt. They probably look at it like that. It's a miracle for the smaller ones. Like if you did, like let's say that you do have like operating expenses covered for the next six months. Like you mm-hmm. have enough in your fund to cover for the mm-hmm. next six months to pay all your employees, keep the lights on, do all of that. Then you're blessed if you're able to do that, especially as a small company. You're you're oh, blessed. And shout out the legendary Robert Feeder. He's the one who reported that story. For those that know, know Robert Feeder is like the gossip man in my industry in radio. Like yeah. radio related Chicago. This dude, like he basically he reported about me hosting overnights before <laughs> I actually told people. 
I don't know who, how he knew I was there, but it was in his closet. Mom, did the mom cut the article out and save it? And just everybody calling me. is like, you know you in feeders. Call me. <laughs> Rats on the new job. And I was like, they just told me about that job. <laughs> he, he was like Sam Jackson and he Juice. Sam Jackson and Juice. <laughs> it's like, I just walked out of the office and found out about that job. Heard about your, uh, <laughs> the, the DJ gig uh, Q. He... <laughs> yeah, Sam Feeder is that. I mean, Robert Feeder is that dude. <laughs> Sam Feeder. <laughs> Sam Feeder. Sam Jackson. There we go. Sam Feeder. That's his name from now on. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Hubbard, um, I'm just going in on all these like Hubbard Radio, which the mix is part of 101 and the drive. They just let go of 12 people from their company. Damn. Like Hubbard, Chicago. So shit's getting ugly out here. For my, I said I'm thankful that um it hasn't hit us. Mm-hmm. Knock on wood that I'm still in a position where I'm, I'm able to provide and handle my business. Thank you. Right, as am I. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm glad that I'm able to. But um, it's getting ugly out here. Though. Shout out to the people who are doing it. Like I saw um, that Trevor Noah. They said that he paid his uh, furloughed workers uh, mm-hmm. who run, who help him run the Daily Show because he's been doing it remotely. Mm-hmm. So the 25 people that you don't see on camera that are behind the scenes, they were furloughed. Yeah, but they like all these shows are doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, in these um people do their show from their home. Guess what? The staff is not you getting paid. Staff, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they said You're that at uh, home, just in front of your iPhone or whatever on your laptop is like you don't right. need the staff for that. You just it's just you in front of your camera. So, so that's why a lot of the staff got laid that, off. Uh, and they said that he paid his twenty five people out of his mm-hmm. pocket. Trevor Noah. Mm-hmm. So big ups to him. Like I mean, I like that. You know that he did. Like that's what you do as an employer. To be a good employer, do that. Like, your workers are out here struggling because it's like your staff, like I said, yeah, you're the star, so you're the millionaire. Mm -hmm. Your staff behind the scenes, they're not millionaires. They're not stars. They think think it's just a one-man show. They just see you on camera. They don't know how many, like, like 50 to 100 people are responsible for putting that show together. They don't have the moving parts because you have the writers, the producers. Production crew, all of that. Production crew. Mm -hmm. All of that, the editors, you know, mm-hmm. everything. It's like it's it's a lot, yeah. And like I said, these ones, these people aren't millionaires. Like I said, the one on the front of the screen, you guys are millionaires, but the behind the scenes, they're not millionaires. So, and they need to support their families and themselves. So, but that's good for Trevor and Noah for doing that. Yeah, big ups. I like Trevor anyway. Big ups. Mm-hmm. Big ups to him. Um. Do you want to uh, delve in real quick about uh, for the last couple of weeks what we've been into that uh, we haven't touched because, like, I'm glad we did because we're letting the stuff build up about the um, last. I want, I'll, I'd rather wait to get to that. I want to go one more um, one okay. of the subjects you saw with. Um, let's pull it up before I actually uh, misquote with Diddy about Joe Biden. You saw that? Yes, I saw it. Yes. What do you think uh, about that? about him basically saying that um that he's not but like he was saying he wasn't gonna vote because um Biden like basically the thing about like not feeling like entitled to the vote that mm-hmm. Biden shouldn't just feel that black people should be entitled because black says, people the black vote is not gonna be for free. Um we gotta see some promises. We have to understand what kind of deal we're getting out of this here. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. what's in it for black folks is basically what Diddy's asking. They don't mm-hmm. just um don't just give your vote because, like, just because a oh, Democrat or, or fuck Trump is like just because just it's like what are you doing <laughs> for us? It's like that's what. And a lot of people are more mad at him for that because a lot of people are on that um uh, like fuck Trump thing. But like, Bro, um, blue, I, no I'm kind of with Diddy. It's like um because like I said, I've told this before on the podcast, and I'll say it again. Like I haven't been a registered Democrat since 2004. I've been independent mm-hmm. for like going on 20 years now so i'm kind of like yeah they, they they haven't just got in my vote for like close to two decades now mm-hmm. i, I want to hear what you're saying before i just go like punch democrat you said, that, you said that more than once like you just don't yeah. enthusiastically vote democrat because it's like what are you like what are you addressing as far as what are you providing because it's like too many times we are taking grant for it like a lot of times like us mm-hmm. as black people have to bail out things and then we're not mm-hmm. given any type of 
Like, mm-hmm. no thank you. No, it's not It's not giving, like, nothing is given to us. To and show nothing you. really changes in the hood, right. like, no matter who's in office. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. And the Democrats might do a little pander and, like, carry in hot sauce and <laughs> like, shit like that, but... There's no real, there's no real change and shit. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't need a handshake. I don't need a cool handshake. I don't need you to dab with me to Dougie. I don't need you to do any of that with me. What are you gonna do? What for about our- building up the hood? What about um creating like generational, generational wealth? wealth. Black that's the like, That's one. the stuff um the black people need. Mm-hmm. Not um that's- not Jordans and like hot sauce. Mm-hmm. That's what we need more than anything. The generational wealth. That's what we need. Mm-hmm. Generational wealth is something that we need to land, build. like that has all kinds of things that yeah. you, you need. But so yeah. we just don't have that yeah. knowledge. A lot of us just mm-hmm. don't have it. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I didn't really learn start learning about financial stuff until I was like close to thirty. Like where, where I really started, you know, <laughs> learning. In the about, last five years, when I really like years, um started really. doubling down on um my financial IQ was probably within the last mm-hmm. five years. So. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, you think about it, if you had this knowledge, even if you had this knowledge at 20, even at 25, mm-hmm. where would you have, where would you be now if you had this knowledge like tw- at 25 years old? At 18, coming out of high school. At man. 18, I guess if we even go that far. I'd be, I'd be a millionaire now. I was doing, I said, if I had the knowledge when I was like, when I was working the two jobs, when I was 24, working my two jobs, you know, like I you know what I mean? I wish I had not, that knowledge. Not, then. not giving away too much, but 18 was a long time ago for me. <laughs> I put it like if I started working at 18, not um I might be able to retire with some companies in a couple years. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So imagine like if I had been invested so for that, like I said, I, I would literally be a millionaire right now. Mm-hmm. If I'd have been wisely investing since my mm-hmm. 18th birthday. But we don't And get that's what money. needs to be mm-hmm. shown to the black man. Like I said not like I know the words to this rap song. I can rap with you. I know how to dance. Yeah. Oh yeah. I do. I do a mean dab. It's like yeah. yeah not bad. <laughs> well, I'm a, like if I come to Chicago, I'm gonna go to Heroes with you and eat some Heroes. What? No. Shout I'm gonna eat Heroes with Miles Sauce. Yeah. <laughs> like no, don't eat Heroes. With, I'm gonna get some Gia Dolls with you. No, don't get Gia Dolls with me. I don't care about that. Don't get Italian beef with me. I don't care about that. What are you gonna do for us for our community? I can freestyle. I got a, I got a hot sixteen for you. Like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's just dumb. It's like you know, like like, but that shows where we're valued as black people. We're valued as being cool, as being mm-hmm. something that you can like. Like everybody wants to mimic from black, but nobody wants to be black. Chris Rock had a great joke. It's, it's not cool a white to- guy. He says it's not a white guy in this audience that'll switch places with me, and I'm rich. And I'm rich, exactly. Rock had a great bit like that. He probably wasn't that far off. Like most, <laughs> I didn't see any white dude stand up and say they switch places with him in that audience. <laughs> so he probably cool wasn't that like, far off. And just <laughs> it's cool to borrow culture from us and to like mimic things and to like, yeah, I can rap, I can dance, I can play basketball, like the stereotypes. But then it's like, do you really want to be black? You don't really actually want to be black. Mm-hmm. You don't. Nobody yet. Nobody does. Well, let's since we talk basketball, we can shift gears and talk about the last dance. No, I just had to address that Diddy joke. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, but the Diddy uh especially the backlash Diddy got is like he's kinda right though. Like I get what he was saying. These motherfuckers earn your vote. Yeah. Make him earn it. Like we said, don't enthusiastically give away your vote. Like, yeah, I'm one. No, what are you going to do for me? Show me something. Like, okay, okay, I see you. Yeah, now, now I'm with you. Like, show me something. That's all. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh, the last dance, uh, so it's getting good now. Yep. Because they've done four it's about, episodes. It's about halfway through the thing now by the time this airs. So it can be right. about halfway through the um, 10 episodes. Yeah, so the first four episodes was lit, and they know exactly how to, how to like leave you where you want more. Because at the end of the day, you're like, Ugh, you're like, Ugh. at the end of each week, you're just like, I want more, I want more. Like, where can I get the other ones? One in the second out. half, they probably gonna focus more on that last dance season. Right. right now, we getting we still getting backstories. Like I said, you had um, first was mostly Jordan story, second was Pippins, third Rodman, fourth Phil Jackson. Like that's like yeah, you right. getting the backstories of like the main players, right? And that's probably the man there because I don't see him doing a um, I don't see him doing a Tony Kukoc origin story. Nah, 
Sorry. Like, the role players aren't going to get origin stories. Yeah. So, like, I think that's your four right there. So yeah. Mike, Scotty, Dennis, and Phil. Like, so yeah. we're probably more going to get now. Um, and I think they're going to do um, a, a, what I'm seeing is, like, dream team leading up to Jordan's first retirement. Like, his father's right. death, all of that. Probably his, his gambling scandals. All like that I said, stuff. I hope that they touch the gambling. I hope they that they – Because that's a, that was a big part of him leaving the I first time. But you know what I mean? I hope they really touch. I hope they don't try to like. And that's what I do watch. like about this is like it's not really a fluff. They digging deep. Cause at first, like people was like, uh, uh, it shouldn't be a love fest. Yeah, let's talk no, about, yeah, like let's talk about the dirt that was on them doing shit. Yeah. <laughs> don't just like be. Don't just dick ride Jordan in the bull. Yeah, that's why. Talk about that's yeah right. the gambling shit like. Like, let's, let's talk about everything. I want to see yeah. it all. Don't water it down. Like, I don't want anything to watered down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Isaiah Thomas, like, <laughs> how he's just like, they, these dudes still, like, that's 30 years later. Like, these guys still, like, I don't fuck with you. They I like still, it. I don't fuck with you. 30 it's, years it's later. It's real. I like it. <laughs> right. I want you pretending like, yeah, oh, this is my homie when you secretly hate each other. I like them saying, like, I don't like this motherfucker. I like it. <laughs> well, it's just hilarious to see. Like, they just like, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, and um, I, I forgot to say on loud. I'll say it here, though. Um, Did the Pistons really diss the Bulls or were they practicing social distancing when they walked <laughs> off the court? That's why they didn't say The world may never know. Yeah. <laughs> I well, they the curve. Give them the benefit of the doubt. They were trying to flatten the curve. That's why they didn't want to say that. <laughs> they were trying to flatten this curve for this coronavirus. No, for this Horace, coronavirus for 30 years, we're trying to flatten this curve. I have to go with Horace. They were straight up bitches. I have to go with Horace. <laughs> straight up bitches. What are they practicing social distancing? I don't know. <laughs> straight up bitches. About. I agree with Horace. <laughs> I don't think about it. I wonder how they gonna touch on that, Horace Grant. Um, they talked about Scotty's um beef with the um front office. Yeah, with Horace, Horace left. Grant because like he Horace left because like, he wasn't getting paid. He's like, fuck yeah. this somehow. Horace and left and got he didn't sign a seven year deal. That's why Scotty did. Horace yeah. probably signed like a three year deal, so he got the fuck out of there after his contract yeah. was up. <laughs> Hey, Horace. And then they carry Horace off. That was like that hurt us. Oh, they got to show that, yeah. You know, they carry Horace off the court. It's like a uh, center, yeah. When Orlando beat the Bulls in six, I want to say, and yeah. carried Horace off and like got rained down on Bulls, yeah. Of course, yeah. the Bulls won seventy two games the very next season. So, but, but but there's the thing we see what happens when Jordan has a, a difficult loss, like when they lost to the Pistons, that difficult loss in uh in ninety, they came back. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And swept the Pistons. 89 and 90, they um got beat by them, yeah. Yeah. And then when they lost to Orlando, they came back and swept them in 96. And it ended that team, yeah. Like Shaq that's left. Right. Shaq does. left like, that summer. They ended the Orlando. The Orlando had just made the finals a year before. A right. year later, Shaq was in L.A. Like, George, the they Bulls ended that potential <laughs> dynasty. The Bulls ended them. Got swept in there. Shaq, and Shaq bounced. Shaq, Shaq said, nope. <laughs> mm-hmm. Going to Los Angeles, but that's what so happens though. Rest. Like when the greats, like you do, have to dig down. Like if you are beat by something, you have a difficult loss. You don't go and cry about it. You okay? Mm-hmm. How can I make myself better? Because I'm beating these people next year. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to do. Like they went in the gym and they that summer and was <laughs> like, nope, we going, we going to do this. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to episodes five and six. Like I say, by the time. You know, it, it, this airs, and you guys would have already seen episodes five and six. But I'll be watching. I know I'm gonna be into it. I don't know about you, but what's annoying in my timeline is all the forty plus something dick riders on Jordan. It's like every week, all I see is um somehow we watching a documentary about Jordan and the Bulls from like 25, 30 years ago. But what are all these fucking LeBron mentions in my timeline? Well, why is LeBron? It's not, yeah, it's it's not LeBron, LeBron fans. It's not saying well, LeBron's better. It's the Jordan dick riders that are bringing LeBron's name up. <laughs> like, hey, why is LeBron? Uh, LeBron stands. Pay attention. It's like. Hey, why don't you just enjoy the greatness just of Jordan? enjoy it. Why is right. LeBron on your mind? Why are you obsessed with that, man? It's like, <laughs> why are you so obsessed yeah. with him? Y'all are obsessed with LeBron James. Like, I wasn't even thinking about LeBron. I'm watching, like, basketball that was from, like, when I was in grammar school and high school. From, like, yeah. I'm not thinking about, yeah, I wonder what LeBron fans think. Like, who gives a fuck? I'm enjoying this Jordan documentary. I'm enjoying it because it's, like, it brought up, like, nostalgia. Yeah, that's what I was on. That's I was what like, I was having. It brought back a lot of good memories and, and went to a lot of stuff I forgot about. 
It's like, right. oh, shit, I totally forgot about such and such. Mm-hmm. That's where my mind was at. And then see so the random players, like uh, when they showed up. Uh, like when they showed Judd Bushler talking, I was like, "Yeah, Judd Bushler, random yeah." Shit. Said the the Joe Clines of the world fired me up. Shit. The, the randoms. When I saw my I crush, DJ Armstrong, shit, like that's the ones I'm. That's who I got fired up about. Blows, yeah. Like, DJ got me fired up. Rusty, Rusty <laughs> LaRue and shit. <laughs> Rusty LaRue. <laughs> he didn't talk, but I saw him in the background on the thing. Yeah, uh, they probably you, you can't find. You have to go to um. You have to go down to the homeless section of Chicago stop. to find Rusty. Stop. 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 <laughs> Going on the Pacific Garden mission Stop. to find him now. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Go Scott for real. When they showed him on the plane, Scott for real. So Jordan taking his money. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just fun. How fucked up is that? Jordan was like, he's already making like $35 million from the NBA, not to mention all of his doors. But he's That's taking petty. Scott Burrell's money. That's petty. <laughs> That's beyond petty. How funny is that? That's beyond petty. Taking take Scott Burrell's pennies, man. His pennies. <laughs> his little take, coins. Taking his crumbs. And just, his little coins. How funny is that, man? It's like, oh, okay, yeah. Here, and then you just give it to your son. Here, put this in your bank, son. <laughs> That's what his little coins are doing. Don't anybody play cards with Michael Jordan. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you're I'll just, watch I'm not getting in that card game. Yeah, <laughs> you're just not very bright to do that. <laughs> Scott Burrell thought he could hang though. No You're not very bright to do that, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was out of the NBA a year after that. So. <laughs> he might be Stop. hanging out with Rusty LaRue down there. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I forgot Rusty was on those teams. I remember Rusty on the um on the trash ass teams post dynasty. I forgot he was on that last dance team. Because he didn't play, like he was way at the end of the event, so I forgot he was on that. Got and, a ring. I was like, and I was like, oh, I forgot Rusty Larue was on that team. I totally forgot. I remember from them. Horrible, got a ring. I remember from <laughs> trash ass teams that came post dynasty. It's like I remember that Rusty Larue when he when he actually played for the Bulls during those teams. <laughs> I forgot he was on the championship team, the last one, because <laughs> he didn't play. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. Hilarious, man. <laughs> But yeah, but just enjoy the documentary. We don't have to make it be a comparison. Like, I think if anything... The only reason that Kobe is not even in this is because he died in the helicopter crash. Otherwise, you see a bunch of Kobe mentions, too. Like, yeah, all y'all Kobe stands. And like, but the only reason like, people are respecting Kobe because he died. It's like, yeah. Right. Otherwise, if Kobe hadn't, like, it would be like, all I would see in my time was Kobe disses and LeBron disses. Now it's just all LeBron yeah. ones because Kobe's not here anymore. My thing is, I think that anything with this documentary should do is, like, even if you were kind of um, where you had, like, a debate about who's the GOAT or whatever, I think this documentary should kind of just solidify that Michael Jordan is the GOAT because a lot of people, like, even... If you grew up age, watching him, I could still see how you even, wouldn't say he's the GOAT if you didn't But even my age, it's like, early Jordan, I was too young for early Jordan because I, I was a little kid when he first got drafted. I was young. I was very young. I didn't start getting into Jordan until around 1990, like 89, like the shot in 89 was like when I started getting into it. So I missed all that when he was like flying through the sky, you know, flying through the air and doing all that. Like 85, 86, I missed, 86. I missed like the whole thing where he scored the 63 points. In Boston, I missed that for the first. I missed that live. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was too little for it. You know to care about what was going on. I was like Ariana's side. I was watching that, but I wasn't really a Bulls <laughs> fan. Right. I, 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 I said it fan. before. I grew up. I was Showtime was my team. Yeah, you were like during that fan. time. Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of Bulls fans are probably clutching their pearls right now, but yeah. Eighty six. It was like I wasn't a fan of the Believe it or not, I wasn't a fan of the traveling cocaine circuit. I like Jordan, but I didn't care for the Bulls at the time. Because <laughs> they were. Like, it was Jordan and a traveling cocaine circus. That's traveling what the Bulls were during that time. <laughs> Before they got Scotty and Horace and, like, all of those guys. Yeah. And Phil. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, like, yeah. I even like the Doug Collins Bulls. Like, yeah, being pre-Phil, I like Collins. Was yeah. Because like, yeah. Collins had a passion. They were showing, like, how he had sweat. Like, he would always be sweating. During that 86 era? <laughs> It was just Jordan and the traveling cocaine. So I think Oakley was on those teams. He was good. It had some decent play. Of course, mm-hmm. Pax was always around for some who still hasn't been fired yet for some reason. I don't even know what his job title is. Like I think he's just getting a check now. Because <laughs> he's he's uh, he doesn't do shit. Hey, because they got a they, you saw they hired a new GM. They first yeah. they already hired the vice president. They hired the new GM. We get the new GM's name. 
I know it was a black guy. He's a black man, yeah. So first uh, black GM for the Chicago mm-hmm. Bulls. So this is big. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get some diversity. Yeah, that's good. They said that right from the beginning they wanted to hire a person of color, and they did. They mm-hmm. actually lived through it. That's good, though. Mark Eversley, former, um, formerly of the Sixers. He was part of the okay. Sixers front office. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, it's – um. What the hell does Pax even do now? <laughs> he's just money. He's, <laughs> here's what sucks though. They fired Scotty though, because Scotty was an ambassador. They let him go early. So he fired Scotty, but not Pax though. How does they like, what what does Pax have on Jerry Ryan? Once again, again Scotty gets played in there to the left. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Scotty keeps on getting players. Like back, he was like, yeah, back in the day, like, um, Kukoc, Harper, Longley, they were making more money than Scotty. <laughs> Once again, Scotty gets now, played. Yeah. Now Scotty gets fired, but Pax doesn't though. That's bogus. They fired. I didn't know they fired Scotty as ambassador. Yeah, I talked know about that. They say he doesn't work for the Bulls anymore. They Aww. Like, yeah, so I don't know if it's because of the furlough of his before that. I know that he's not with them anymore though, which sucks. Simon couldn't be any worse, especially now. That they, a lot of people are just finding out about Scotty's. I knew about the Scotty stuff way back when. But a lot of people are just finding out now. <laughs> He's like, oh, and they fired him again. Now people really are not fucking with the bull. <laughs> they were mad all over it. They going to be mud after this. <laughs> after this doc finally finished there. They fired him again this year. In 2020, they still fucking with Scotty. <laughs> but um, I'm ready to move on to it. Oh, and before we um get into – um. My final um subject. I had um one more nugget. Oh, okay. Go ahead. As I pull it up, no, I'm stalling right now. <laughs> it's okay. I can sing right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> like I'm sing. just getting names. I like naming names. <laughs> I like um naming right. names. I know having the actual factual stuff instead of just like so a guy or a girl or whatever mm. for having like real names and real people to report. I get it. Well, yeah, go ahead. You help me stall. <laughs> you help me stall. Okay, so like <laughs> so I'm just trying to get this dude's name. That's all. So I can sing right now. I'm bad with names about shit. Yeah. Would you guys like not even to sing? <laughs> Let's take a vote. I think you're a great kid. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'd rather you not sing. Actually. I don't sing. Dancing is my strength. I'm not a great singer. I'm a dancer. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not going to worry about finding his name. I'll be here all day looking for that shit. But another um, high school prospect is going to the G League. So that makes three now that I'm skipping oh. the double A. <laughs> I wanted to get his name. <laughs> So okay. we got three of them. So actually, um, this could be a real path if it works okay. out. That's like, if even one of them becomes a big star, it's like, then you open it up a whole new lane. Yeah. So See how I rolled on my neck? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you said they have the opportunity to make, what, $500,000? Like half million dollars, yeah, to play ball, which is what they want to do instead of pretending to be a college student. Where well, they going to make <laughs> zero even, because you can't you work. Zero, you're not even going to class. <laughs> And your stuff is getting it's, taken from you. Sham and shit, yeah. If you and get hurt, you hurt, then guess what? You lose your scholarship. So, like, do people say, well, they get a free education. Yeah, but if they get hurt, you're not going to get it. So, exactly. It's sham and shit, yeah. Fuck the NCAA. I've been <laughs> fired up all over again. Glad, <laughs> glad March Madness got canceled. And shit. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> but ready to have some Facebook fun? Yes. <laughs> Since we had good, um, we had a good response last week for Facebook Fun, so we tried. So you're gonna make this a whole segment, like from now on. Yeah, Facebook Fun. I like Mm -hmm. it. So I posted another question. I said, "What's one movie that everybody seems to like, but um, that you hate?" I went out. I always put my palm (laughs) choice first. Mine is Belly. I don't yeah, know no fucking Tina. Y'all know Belly, yeah. You know. You kind of stole mine, and I was like, well, I was going to say Belly, but I can't say Belly again because you already said Belly. And, then and our, uh, brother, our brother Feast and shit called him, he said it was blasphemous. He said blasphemy. He said Belly is the shit. And I said, nah, bro, Belly wasn't the shit. It was just <laughs> shit. <laughs> he put the tear emoji on. And then I had to, And then I had to chime in with this, and I wrote, remember when we 
air quote, went to see Belly because Feast and I actually, well, we snuck in the movies to see Belly. We'll sneak in to see Sorry. Belly. Yeah, we <laughs> snuck in. Nobody in that theater paid to see Belly because, like, everybody who was in the theater with us when we saw Belly, everybody had snuck in. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said Wiz. I mean, this is in days when I used to sneak in movies. I don't do that no more. Well, at least they all agreed to me. I had a couple of people agree with me and said, yeah, you're right, Belly sucked. Yeah. yeah. And then visually, um, it seemed like filmmakers. Ass and, shit, yeah. and then Marcus said to me when um when he was talking to me, Marcus was like, he was like, visually, he said, yeah, the storyline was trash. And Marcus said the same thing. He said, but he was like, it was beautifully He's shot. Like, story wise and acting, it was weak, but you got to admit it was shot beautifully. I said, I guess that's just a filmmaker thing. Filmmaker yeah, filmmaking ninjas. Yeah, be, yeah y'all are annoying me with that. Just look at the aesthetics of like, okay, like, yeah. Okay, visually it did look nice, but it was a horrible movie. We're talking about bad movies. Right, not, it was a horrible <laughs> movie. It was. We're not talking about horrible. best cinematography. We're talking about this is Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I've never seen a cinematography category <laughs> of Rotten Tomatoes and shit. <laughs> this ain't the Oscars. This is Rotten Tomatoes. So this shit sucked. That's we did. <laughs> awful. This is the Razzies. What's that other show? Yeah, it's Razzies. It's the Razzies. Yeah. This ain't the Oscars and shit. It was, it was awful. Oscars. You talk about cinematography. Razzies. You talk about what was the worst movie? And shit. My choice. I said I. I kicked off. I said Acrimony. Which I never even saw, but it um, was awful. Melanie, Don't waste your time. Our cousin Melanie said it was trash, though. Yeah, it was hot trash. I mean, I like Taraji Hansen, but it was hot trash. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. It and was my like, Denise, um, she says, yeah. set it off was one she said. <laughs> I know, that shot me. I said, I like set it off, though. <laughs> I did enjoy set it off. I think that she was some dumb bitches at the end when, like, you know, you gave up uh, Blair Underwood to, like, go and rob that last bank, and you gave up Blair Underwood. That was dumb. But, I mean, I'm I'm going too much. That's my personal opinion about Lisa it. Lisa E. and Xavier both say Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Which I for the on. dance sequence, you can't say just for the dance sequence alone. The when he danced to what was that, Jamiroquai? Yeah, he was dancing. I can see how somebody would say that movie sucked, though. I, I told you, <laughs> he killed that. <laughs> Volpa Pedro dance. was awesome, though. But I can see how somebody would say that. he killed that dance at the air. I don't care what no one said. He was moving. Good one from both Bridget and the homie DJ R. Dub Rico. Um, said Black Panther. So no Wakanda forever. I can't. <laughs> And that's exactly what I put in his uh, comment. I put the Wakanda forever with him going down with T'Challa walking down the aisle and they were saluting him. I was like, no, nah, I can't. I can't even agree with you on that, bro. I can't agree with that. Rico said he fell asleep twice during the Black Panther. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. Well, Marvel movies are long and it's like, unless you're not wide awake, if you try to watch a Marvel movie late, and you're sleepy, and then you go to sleep, and then you wake oh, up. Yeah, I, was, I was in Wakanda watching this movie. You don't know what's going on. There was no way for me to go. fall asleep during this movie while you're in Oh, yeah, Wakanda. you were Yeah, you were in Wakanda. <laughs> 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 I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, Black Panther a lot. Of course, Lanisha, Peaches, whatever you want to call her. Peaches. She got about 60 <laughs> different names. But yeah. <laughs> Nisha, she asked Rico, do you like any other Marvel movies? She was like, didn't like Captain Marvel. Iron Man 2 was all right. That last Spider-Man was in there. It was trash. <laughs> I, I liked all of them. I liked all the all the stuff. I, well, I'm trying to remember. Iron Man 2 was the one with Mickey Rourke, right? I have to go back I'm and watch remember it. Iron Man 2. I it think that was the one with Mickey Rourke. Remember. I like the first Iron Man. I'm trying to remember Iron Man. I know the first Iron Man was basically the start of the MCU. Yeah, I like the oh, first. I like that. Because I haven't seen it since it's original, since it originally came out. I think it was the one Mickey Rourke, if I'm not mistaken. I think. Mike he had the chain said thing. belly and shit. <laughs> I see you. You had Precious, one of yours. Uh, yeah. I was like, people really like Precious. I guess it won awards, so somebody liked it. It won awards. To me, it so sucked. Cool. So I, I agree with yeah, you on that it, one. Yeah, it sucked to me. Mm-hmm. It was just too much neg- Like, How much negativity can one person have? It's like everything, like it's just a permanent cloud storm over her. <laughs> like really? Mm-hmm. Starlet says, "Lean on me." <laughs> <laughs> Sam's. How do you not like Sam? Stop fucking around and do it expeditiously. How did you not like Joe Clark? <laughs> yeah, Sam, shout out to homie Mike Jones. <laughs> the split image of Sam's. <laughs> Look up Mike Jones in my timeline. Now watch "Lean on Me." Stop. Stop. Mr. Clark believes in this. 
doesn't believe in you because you don't take care of your responsibilities. Okay, now I'm calling lean on me. I need to stop. <laughs> I put another whack movie was all eyes on me. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Yeah, that's so when I first saw it, I was like, I don't know how I felt about it. Then the second time I was like, yeah, that sucked, man. It was like a made for TV movie. Cause like the way they shot, it was just like they made it like all videos. Like they did all the Tupac's videos. Yeah, it was like, like a, the way- video, um, a video co- collage or whatever. What's the word? Yeah, I'm like, it was like that. It was compilation. It was, like, is that the word? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like a compilation of Tupac funny. video. You'd have to do a reenactment of every video this dude was in. I'm yeah, they did a re- but that's a weak way to do a storyline. Like if you're doing a um, a biography about somebody, then it's like. Mm-hmm. You just don't rest then, on that. Like, juice, like that was totally pointless. The juice reenactment, <laughs> the locker scene, which was just bad. Like, yeah, it was like yeah. Tupac was rolling over. If he had a grave, he'd be rolling over in it and shit. Yeah. After that, um, reenactment, <laughs> that shit was terrible. The boy looked like him, but he, he looked wasn't like a good him. Actor. I am crazy. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what? That's how fuck you about you. <laughs> what? <laughs> fuck about steel. They like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I already started with time all eyes on me, and I didn't watch it again. So. <laughs> you remember that? Cause I'm the motherfucker you need to worry about, partner. <laughs> partner, what? Uh, Xavier also said, which a lot, a lot of women got fucked up over was loving basketball. Yeah, hey, you agree yeah, with the ending? I see. That. I agree with the ending. I know that's like, one of you. You like the movie, but the ending was. Yeah. Wah, the, movie wah. Was, <laughs> the ending was not trash. It was, the and way. Marcus. Marcus told me about a thing, um, and I have to go back and listen to this podcast where um, he was like, Jamel Hill was on it talking to, and I forget the person she was on with then. They basically broke down um, Love and Basketball. It was terrible basketball. about the end of that movie. And they, oh, they broke, broke it the down, whole movie and, down, okay. And Jamel Hill had the same reaction that I had, because I'm like, when I first saw Love and Basketball, I was a lot younger. I was like 18 or 19. I was a teenager. And then when I watched it again as a grown-ass woman, I'm like, Monica did nothing wrong. So for her to have to beg to Quincy, let me plead for your heart. For her to have to beg for would have been back, um, her being engaged. To, like, it could be what? Boris Kojo's character or whoever. Or it could be another guy. Like, Boris somebody. Kojo shits on everybody. Put Boris Kojo in there. Yo, she's using the movie anyway. <laughs> right, Let's bring him back. Everybody. They got back together after Q. Perfect them. band. You know? They got back together. <laughs> like, Boris Kojo, have them... Um, Put the two of them together, and or hey, hey, Rick Fox is around. There could be somebody like that. I'm just trying to think of somebody that, that would shit on Q and shit like you know, the Boris Kojo or Rick Fox, somebody like that. Yeah, have her engaged to them and shit, and have him like beg her to get back together. <laughs> like right. I fucked up. I should have never let you go in college. They should have had it. Right. It's like she didn't do anything wrong. She did absolutely nothing wrong. And then Q, he was a dick, you know. He was like a, a spoiled dude and entitled and stuff, and a baby about shit. She did. He cheated on her with Monica Calhoun. It's like she did nothing wrong, so she yeah, should not had to bear him. He was low key a trash character. He was. He was trash. <laughs> yeah, uh, Speaking of Omar F, our cousin Felicia, she says the wood. <laughs> <laughs> I like the wood. With page fifteen on. Yeah, oh, that dude was funny. The one that played Slim, he was funny. <laughs> the young Slam was hilarious. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Um, Lisa Ray was terrible in that movie. Yeah, she's terrible in everything. She as um, what's his name? <laughs> T D. His fiance. <laughs> I ain't gonna cry. I put How you gonna do this to me, Roland? I ain't gonna cry. I took too much damn time on this makeup, so I ain't gonna cry. So she Look sells. at you, Roland. Y'all drunk and shit. I'm up there. Wrong movie. <laughs> he did get drunk in that movie. That's what I said. <laughs> and then somebody, marry y'all drunk and shit. <laughs> and, oh, and then I said Norbit too. Norbit was horrible. Yeah, you could, you could do a whole list of just Eddie Murphy movies with this. Movie. Was I could have made the question like, "What's the worst Eddie Murphy movie?" You Metro. <laughs> Metro was bad. Um, Holy Man was trash. Oh, dash. Bowfinger sucked. I'm trying to think of like a bunch of Eddie Murphy. Movies. I kind of like Bowfinger though. I do. Yeah, it was dumb. It was dumb, but I kind of liked it. I kind of like Bowfinger. Can't say that I did. Pluto Nash might be my least favorite. Pluto. Dave. Huh? Meet Dave. That Dave. That when I don't he was even know in the robot. It sounds like it sucked. Oh, that looked like it sucked. I didn't see that. I know I didn't see that. <laughs> it looked like it sucked. What was the one where like um? He couldn't like he he had to watch his words like a thousand oh, words. Oh yeah, that shit. he 
Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the name of it. Yeah, me too, but, but, our... <laughs> but the words like falling from the tree because like his tree was like his words that he had left. So we just do a whole one with just Eddie. Oh, I got a good one, a movie that I hate everybody loves. I'm going to put with Eddie. The Golden Child. <laughs> As a matter of yeah, fact, I should write that on. <laughs> If you of a certain age, you think Golden Child was good, but um, I am of a certain age that still sucks to me. No, it was bad. <laughs> oh, of course, Doctor Doolittle that wasn't good. Yeah, I didn't like Doctor Doolittle. It was weak. The Nutty Professor Two, I didn't care for. Yeah, Clumps, that, that, that was bad. That was bad. I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. I did not like that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Janet Jackson, poetic justice. <laughs> That's the question. Does Chicago die? They never show him again. <laughs> After Tupac whips his ass and throws his brush down the road, they never show him again. And with Chicago, he was brushing his hair. The whole yeah. time. <laughs> he throws his brush and then they kick him out of the mail truck because he slapped the shit out of Regina King. <laughs> she kind of deserved this shit. Like. <laughs> I'm fucking so by whatever she said. Yeah. Yeah. Like she kind of deserved that. Like I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like, audience felt sorry for Chicago actually watching that because like yeah, like, she kind of had that coming. <laughs> we, we wanted to slap the shit out of Regina King, and then he's Chicago too. He's shy town, so. <laughs> and then they kicked him out, and then they never show say to the Chicago die. They left him in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, I know you thought. I know what you think is the best part of poet justice. Well, Janet Jackson in those jeans. Oh, yes. <laughs> Janet Jackson's ass. Hashtag, yes. <laughs> Watch Poetic Justice if you've ever seen it. Look at Janet Jackson in those jeans on the mail trip. Yes. <laughs> that was a very enjoyable. Movie wasn't enjoyable, but Janet in those jeans. The poet, the poetry Janet was Janet was my first crush. That's why, yes. Like, as a writer, I was like, the poetry was good. I liked her poetry. That's a man, Janet Jackson's the ass movie was, was good. bad. <laughs> the movie was bad. I was like, this is the follow up to Boys in the Hood. <laughs> like, and somebody actually said on your list, somebody said Boys in the Hood. I was like, <gasps> I got a Boys in the Hood vote. Yeah. Someone said that. And I, 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 cl- I put on my thing, I clutched the pearls with her. I had to clutch my pearls. Ricky! I was like, how is that? The gentrification scene alone, which. I was furious talking to Ricky and Volumes Ray. today. The gentrification scene. The that whole scene. For some reason, Grady from Sanford and Son was Grady? <laughs> yeah, Furious, Trey, Ricky, a bunch of street n- ninjas, and then Grady, Grady from Sanford and Son was there for some reason. <laughs> Why did Grady walk up with the thugs? That was pretty funny. Well, he was an old man. He had to be the one to say that, no, it's not. It's them shooting each other and killing. You guys are bringing out somebody the to deliver that line. He had delivered the line. He probably wasn't even probably wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. He was just act, the actor was just there. He just showed up. Grady. <laughs> Grady was just there. He was in his hey, neighborhood. Grady. He probably lived next door to whatever. He probably <laughs> actually lived in Compton. <laughs> he was <laughs> he just walked out while they were shooting. They put him in the movie. He said Grady, hey, Grady come on. Because <laughs> he kind of just came out of nowhere. Hey, Grady, yeah. <laughs> he had the one line, and that was it. <laughs> You put Pootie Tang, of course, but yeah, that yeah, sucked. Tang know, if you really think Pootie Tang was good, it kind of sucked. Though. People liked it. They said that it was like, people say it was like one of those good and terrible things. I, <laughs> I think it was just terrible. It wasn't good and terrible to me. It was just terrible. So I tell you, I didn't like Pootie Tang. Corinne Jones, she put um, New Jack City. <laughs> Come on, Nino Brown is one of the greatest villains in history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> CMB, come on. <laughs> you know, <we've> got. <laughs> Chris Rock is the crackhead. Pookie is the crackhead. Yes. <laughs> it's some then, good talent in that movie. And then Mr. Don't Wake Me, I'm <laughs> Dreaming. Pretty motherfucker. <laughs> right. I did not like that. Uh, which we call who still looks the same age, and Vanessa Williams, who hasn't aged in 35 Goodbye, years. Keisha. Yeah, she has an age. <laughs> Radio Raheem as the 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 the, 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 the Dutta man. Yeah, the stuttering. Which we're calling uh, Alan Payne. Well, before he showed his ass in uh, Jason's lyrics. Yes, Alan what... Payne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he showed his hairy butt. Starlet yeah. also put Starlet also put one of your favorite movies up, uh, Love Jones. <laughs> you know, we told that story before the first time you saw Love Jones. Uh, you had to see it a second time before you appreciated it. Yeah, I had to see it alone to appreciate it. I was like, oh, this movie was good. Now, I think that Love Jones is more accurate, like how they wrote, like with the love story of how they came about with um, with uh, Nia Long and um, 
Lorenz Tate. Lorenz Tate or Darius and um, Nina, how they came along. Yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta agree with um, Starlet. Love just sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew you. Now I got, I got you and Feast in one. I got Feast with Belly. I got you with Love Jones. Love Jones was us. Uh, just a just, movie I like that y'all probably did. It just spoke volumes about just like the spoken word and like, well, I'm into spoken word and all that stuff. I, that's yeah. Which I'm gonna be ready for for Versus the next mm-hmm. week with Erica Badu and Jill Scott. Yeah. I'm gonna have my hair wrap on watching it. Charles um, says most Tyler Perry movies, mom will be clutching her pearls. Somewhere. Yeah, mom. Ooh, I have to agree with Tyler that. Tyler are so good. Yeah, she's I have good. To agree with that. A Fall from Grace was hot trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our mom's Tyler Perry's biggest fan. Medea's she- funeral, that Medea family funeral, that last movie, that was awful. Me and Marcus mm-hmm. watching, and we was like, we were watching. We didn't really like. Well, we laughed at uh, when he was Joe. Joe was funny, but then the other characters, we just didn't look at each other like. What is this? Shout out Roderick Quinn. He says Endgame was garbage. <laughs> I do not like Endgame. <laughs> and a couple more from my cousins. I got to um, post um, David and Kirk, two cousins. <laughs> David says bad boys. Kirk says Captain America. So, there you go. <laughs> I do not like bad boys. I like bad boys. David says bad boys was trash. He said, <laughs> I like bad boys. Yeah, yeah, David, is not, the they, David is out of a lot of interesting views, so that is a, so that's one of his interesting views. He said, "Bad boy sucked." And I enjoy Captain America. I don't know, like where, Kurt where, says he didn't like Captain America. So. I like Captain America. Well, I mean, I like when he came out the chamber in his shirt. It's off, but that's why you like the movie because he's not a fucking Kurt. I'm agree with Kirk now. That's the reason why you like it. Okay, the movie was good though. It was a good movie. <laughs> gotta go with Kirk on that one. <laughs> it got better as it went along because uh, the second one was better than the first, and then the third one was really good. I like Civil War. Civil War was really good. Your yeah, Civil War was introduced to the Black Panther, which yeah, it was really hated. Good. <laughs> Even the first one wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but. I think I'm done. Like, unless you got anything, I'm ready to wrap this up. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, that's it. Not another damn podcast. Yes. Finish the time for a change. Yeah. <laughs> Going over time. <laughs> Definitely appreciate each and every one of you supporting us. If you like what we're doing, if you want to support further, got a couple of ways. Um, like the Facebook fan page, not another damn podcast. Also, subscribe, share, rate, review every damn where. We have um uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, SoundCloud. Yes, iHeart as well. Even with all their bullshit, <laughs> you can catch us there. <laughs> also, you can um, get us on TLC Talk Radio. What up, Tasha? Hey, Tasha. And you can check us out on your Alexa devices. I'm hoping mine doesn't go off. <laughs> and if you um like, um yeah, YouTube. Yeah, we have audio only, but video coming eventually. Mean of yeah, you know what that means. We say that every week as far as the video on that, but. And you can follow me at Oz Man the Wizard on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Oz Radio on Snapchat and Facebook as well. You can also check out OzRadio.net, a.k.a. a work in progress, but it's getting there a little bit. And you like the 90s and 2K classics, hit up OzRadio.net, the bomb. And you can check me out, msima 8626 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Mm-hmm. Also, str8gullely1 on Twitter, mm-hmm. str8gullely7 on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Also, please like the Straight Gully Facebook fan page. Yeah. Check out straightgully.com for your blogs and your vlogs. Okay. And for video production needs, check out straightgullyproductions.com. There it is. I'm Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. And we will talk to you later. Bye. I'm gone.